Welcome back to our study, our devotional study on the works and words of Jesus. We're in a, a passage here in Luke chapter 13 where Jesus has been addressing a large crowd. Various parables have been given, which I've already covered in early on in our whole series five, six months ago. But today I want to speak particularly about what is called causation um, from the two passages I'm going to deal with. What is the cause of pain, heartache and suffering? And it's an issue which has, been, has taxed the minds of theologians for centuries. But I think there's two answers we come out with today's story. The first then is from Luke chapter 13. And Jesus is speaking. Uh, before he does, there was some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. So obviously Pontius Pilate had killed some Galileans um, who had risen up against him. Jesus said, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. The principle is there's bad things happen. There were Galileans who were put to death. There were people... Uh, on whom a tower of Siloam fell. And Jesus asked the question, do you think they were worse than other people? And his answer is no. And so I think that's the general principle that bad things happen. It rains on the good and the bad alike. There's good stuff that happens to pagans and believers, and there's bad stuff that happens to pagans and believers. It's part of a lot of mankind which we need to accept. There's no selectivity on who necessarily dies early or dies of cancer or whatever, or some disease. It's, it's pretty random in some sense, and it's not connected necessarily with sin. There was, they hadn't sinned more, Jesus says, in this particular situation. And that's important for us to understand. So the idea that actually every time something bad happens is because you've sinned is not correct. It's the randomness of nature and man's decisions and accidents that do happen. And we didn't understand that. What he does say, you all need to repent or you two will perish. Either way, we're going to die when I'm 30, 50, 60, 80. But we all need to repent because there's an eternity to come. And these years we have on this life are a fraction of what is to come into glory. So his main message here is don't worry about causation when a person does die. Uh, repent and perish. Worry about the one who can destroy your soul in eternity is what he says in the passage uh, around this Luke 13. Uh, so that's the first principle. Then the next thing, he goes on in verse 10. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Now that's incredible. Uh, Jesus comes to a woman who's been crippled for 18 years. She's obviously miserable. She's got no movement. And we're told in that passage she's been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. And because Jesus heals her on the Sabbath, good old Pharisees complain again. And they say, no, you can't heal on a Sabbath. And Jesus gives the standard uh, uh, replied that actually which of you if you have an animal that falls into a pit on the Sabbath are not going to rescue it we're to do good on the Sabbath don't uh, straight jacket the deeper principles with your little regulations here uh, it's a good thing I'm doing I'm healing this woman who's been infirm for 18 years and the fact that it's on a Sabbath is completely irrelevant is what Jesus is saying don't tie up your Christianity with religious rules but then at the end, he says, "Then should this is verse 16 now, Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? And then we get the end of the passage. When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. So he refers to this woman who's been crippled for 18 years and says, Satan has kept her bound. And I think that's the second principle. Although bad things happen, the proximate or immediate cause of suffering is not God. It is Satan. 
Now, God might allow that to happen in our world. He might allow the freedom of choice to affect us. We might sometimes be the cause of our own suffering through excessive drinking or gluttony or stress, and that might cause various related illnesses. But here specifically, Satan has kept this woman bound as a cripple for 18 years. The immediate proximate cause of pain, suffering, and heartache can be attributed to Satan. And God can always work through those difficult times. God can always use those difficult times for our own good. But the proximate cause, the immediate cause here is Satan. And I think that's the general thing. When there's pain, heartache, rioting, destruction of property, people are killed, murdered, whatever it is, Satan is the active party in that situation, which you must never forget. God is not, God is not unjust, says scripture. God doesn't seek to tempt because he's a holy God. So Satan is the one moving around seeking whom he can harm, destroy, and kill. And I think that's the principle we learn today. So let's leave it at that basically to understand that difficult times happen and God uses it for his glory. And uh, it can happen to good and bad people. And yet Satan is always the proximate cause of suffering and pain in our world. And yet God, in and through that, if we respond appropriately and correctly, can be a blessing as we learn to uh, have faith in him and trust that he's working in our lives and in this situation. Come, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And we pray, help us to understand your sovereign hand in the affairs of men. And we do that and we trust you by faith that you're in control. You know what you're doing and you are in perfect control of all things that happen in our world. And yet, Lord, we understand that again in our world there is an active party seeking to damage, destroy, and uh, undermine your works and your goodness and your grace to us. Give us wisdom, we pray, in going forward. We ask it in your precious name. Amen.